Good morning, folks. Today we're looking at pre-earthquake electromagnetic anomalies, solar forcing of the weather. We'll check in on the hurricane again. And of course, as always, we are starting with the last 24 hours on our star, where solar flaring continues its dip. We've got plasma filaments and coronal holes. We've got several sunspots as well. While the last two days have been pretty calm, there are a lot of eruptive threats on the sun at the moment. We're going to break those down right now, starting with that two-day dropout of flares. Here's the GOES X-ray flux showing the flare production. Since the X-class flare on the 6th, we're seeing a much quieter run with mostly C-class range in the flaring department. There remains a good chance for flares today, since the sunspots are so numerous and there is some magnetic complexity within these groups. We'll be monitoring that today, both their activity and their movement and reconfiguration. We'll also be watching the plasma filaments like this big one on the south. Look at the size of that prominence rope. Meanwhile, the latest coronal hole entering central heliographic longitudes is at mid-latitude on the north. Much better chance of this one amplifying the solar wind here at Earth would likely be early next week. Checking back in on Raphael, strong hurricane getting nervously close to the coastline, but forecasts still have it slated to do what we've never seen before, cancel its northward motion and dive bomb to the southwest towards Mexico. Again, they have never seen a hurricane behave like this one. Two pre-earthquake anomaly studies up next. First one looks at total atmospheric electron content, which is the most popular pre-earthquake signal in the studies. It's clear that the electromagnetic processes of pre-rupture stress gives telltale signs that we can monitor, and further in that vein. This study drills down directly to those electric fields created in the ground, like lightning under our feet. While less popular than the atmospheric signals, they are much harder to detect, these truly do happen first and are directly tied to the stress on the rock. Last but not least in the articles, excellent study using a model that takes electrodynamics into account and they found that the sun has a significant impact on global temperature and clouds. We've seen similar analyses performed dozens of times but never from the back door. Here they model taking away the sun's intensity then seeing what happened to the temperature, cold, and then major cloud effects. Folks, the Thanksgiving event at the ranch is today. Highly recommend the conference event coming at the end of the month and the special event on December 14th, UFO Day and our pre-solstice event. Come out and see us, observerranch.com. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow right here, but right now it's 5.30 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.